can this medicinal herb actually help with back pain, certain kinds of arthritis, and actually maybe could it help bones to actually grow back together? Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. Once again, I'm here in my herb garden. This beautiful plant right here is called comfrey. The bees love it and it's been used as forage in the past for animals and it's great for compost piles. But does it also have scientifically backed up medicinal purposes? Let's look at the research. Now, comfrey is actually native to Europe, but it's made its way to the United States, probably with the settlers and so forth as, as a remedy. And now it's just, it's a weed in North America now at this point, uh, but it can be a very useful weed as we're gonna look at the research. The Latin name for comfrey is, it actually means something like to grow together. Historically, comfrey was called bone knit because the belief was that it would actually help bones to fuse back together when someone was having, uh, if someone maybe had broken a finger, broken a toe, or, or had something that was not, uh, it wasn't coming back together well, this plant was believed to be able to use, to be used uh, externally as a poultice, put over it, and help to fuse bones back together. Now, I actually have a friend who was, had a broken toe, and she, it was not healing. And so they were actually gonna end up doing surgery. And she said, listen, would you give me just a little bit more time and I'm gonna try something. So she tried Comfrey and um, within literally days, it began to heal. She had struggled with it not healing. And so they, that's why they said, okay, this isn't working. We gotta, we gotta do surgery. So she went back to the doctor within like a week and she said, I think it's healed can you do an x-ray he said no it wouldn't it wouldn't heal that fast and she said no no please just 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 try just just for my sake and so to you know kind of uh okay i'll do it for you and he did it and he was amazed it had literally healed within that short amount of time and he himself was amazed he said we don't believe that things can work transdermally or you know on the skin can't actually do something like that but he said if i have patients who are uh, he was an open doctor. He said, hey, I I'm willing to, it's worth a try. I mean, why not, right? So let's begin to look at some of the research that has been done on using this plant for at least pains and arthritis and back pain and so forth. So let's look at this. Here's comfrey made into a cream and used for back pain. It's a placebo controlled, double blind, randomized trial was conducted to assess the effect of a cream of comfrey root extract on back pain, upper or lower back pain. Now they had a, 120 patients were put on either a placebo or the comfrey cream. What was the result? Those taking the placebo decreased their pain by 37.8%. That's fantastic. Well, maybe they were naturally healing or maybe they really believed it and so they ended up feeling a bit better. But what happened with, with the actual comfrey cream? What do we see? They found that with a comfrey cream, those taking that lowered their pain by 95.2% in five days. That is incredible. So these are incredible results, significantly better, statistically significant uh, benefits seen in this back pain trial versus placebo. But let's go even further. The pain dropped by 33% within one hour. So imagine this is actually quite a fast acting pain medication used externally specific here for, specifically here for back pain. But let's go even further. Osteoarthritis is a painful disease that can often affect the hands, hips, or knees. As the joints lose some of their cartilage, the bones may grow in and fill in the place. This can cause serious pain. So here's comfrey versus placebo on joint pain. Researchers put comfrey gel cream and a placebo to test in their efficacy of helping osteoarthritis pain. After three weeks, the comfrey group had over four times lower pain scores than the placebo group. In addition, the comfrey group had less than half the amount of side effects than the placebo group. So this is amazing. Now let's go on to look back through history. This is comfrey root in the Middle Ages. What did they think about comfrey root way back then? Now comfrey was used for rheumatism in the Middle Ages. Uh, Nicholas Culpepper, who lived from 1616 to 1654, stated that comfrey was beneficial for, and let's see, what were, were all the things he said? Now, the, this, is, this is not a modern scientific journal, so take it for what it's worth, but notice what it says. It says, it's good for spitting, pissing blood, inward wounds and bruises, fistic, bloody flux, 
term stops. Boy, I don't know what that is. Uh, whites, nerves cut, muscles cut, sharp humors, wounds, ruptures, broken bones, knotted breasts, hemorrhoids, inflammation, gout, pain joints, and gangrene. So uh, basically, according to Nicholas Culpepper, this could just about cure anything, right? Uh, now, uh, studies have not been done on all these things, uh, you can imagine, but some of the things that we're looking at, there are benefits according at, at least to the, the research journals up to this point. Here's a study on comfrey root on sprained ankles. A study was performed looking at the effect of comfrey root cream versus a medication gel for sprains. After seven days, there was a statistically significant increased benefit in the comfrey group compared to the drug medication group. Now, this is incredible. So taking a drug, um, maybe it has some benefit, but using this as a cream seemed to work even better than the drug medication. The patients and their doctors rated the comfrey to be better than the drug for this ankle strains that these people would end up having. This is incredible. Well, let's go forward even further. So what about comfrey root and rheumatism? Comfrey root cream was again tested against placebo for musculoskeletal rheumatism. It turned out to be better than placebo and the drug medication. So once again, we are seeing time and time again, whether it's rheumatism, back pain, sprained ankles. And remember, this was believed back in the Middle Ages. That's the great thing. We don't always have to just guess coming up, oh, what works? We can look back to things of the past and then we can actually do peer reviewed scientific studies to find out, hey, do the things they said it worked for actually work or was that just kind of an old wives tale and when it comes to comfrey at least in several cases it seems according to the peer-reviewed literature that yes yes it seems to actually have efficacy in helping with certain maladies so then the question might be asked well is it safe for children well comfrey has been tested on children ages 3 to 12 for strains contusions and distortions and remission or improvement were found in every test. So in many situations, even for children as young as three years old, it seemed to benefit them also. On top of this, let's look a little bit more at the safety of it here. Now, the German Commission E reports that comfrey can be used topically on unbroken skin for four to six weeks, but should not be used continually because of what are known as PAs, these certain alkaloids and uh, they are potentially cancer causing if used for long periods of time or potentially internally and so comfrey should not be taken internally they also suggest not to have more than a hundred i believe that's maybe international units equivalent of these pas daily and pas are linked to cancer in rat studies so uh, historically it was actually used internally but now they're suggesting not to do that so this is the the latest research right now um, but let's go forward Science is showing that there is potentially a benefit in study after study on this particular herb, whether it's the actual herb or whether it's the root. The plant itself seems to have benefits when it comes to areas of pain and healing. Things like strains, uh, back pain or rheumatism, these kind of things. So uh, if you know someone who struggles with this, that's why I actually I actually don't struggle with, uh, you know, these these issues right now. But I think, hey, I'd like to have whatever I can around and grow whatever medication or natural remedies. I'd like to be able to just grow them on my own property. And that's why I do this here. Some things I have here for, uh, you know, for tea or for basil to eat and various things along the way. But the great news is you can do these same things at home. We do know that many of the many of the things we buy in stores don't have any of the actual purported herb actually in the the pill that you buy. Uh, up to 80% of them don't have any of it in there, at least in one particular study that was done. And so being able to grow it yourself, you know what you're getting. You can look at it. You can see, yep, sure enough, that is, that's comfrey, right? You don't have to guess. And you can look into the research. You can, you can do it yourself and, and work with your doctor. That's always a wise thing to do, but check it out for yourself. And hey, if you like this video, uh, hit the like button, subscribe, and we're going to do many more videos on, on studies like this and, and other remedies, and maybe we'll even show some that actually don't work, and we'll say, hey, this is, you know, everybody says this one works, but it doesn't, and uh, we'll look at the research, so check it out. Uh, God bless, and have a fantastic day.
boy, I think I need some comfrey on my knee. No, I'm <laughs> from squat. No, I'm just kidding. 